Hi guys, I'm Niels and um, I'm want to show you in this series how I uh, implement logic into my live show. Um, a lot of artists use backing tracks to enhance their performances. Um, the whole idea is that you know if I wanted to play everything that's on my record live, I know be like a 10 piece band and most of the times the budget doesn't allow to bring 10 musicians across the country or the stage is too small or whatever the setting is it might not be right for that big of a thing but I still want that sound so whatever we don't have on stage I can bring with me on backing tracks um, the only problem usually with how many people implement backing tracks is that they are static they're basically you go from top to bottom and there's no going back and forth you, you know if we play live we might want to jam like check out this intro here and uh, we're gonna jam on this for a while huh? So my session here, as you can see in the back, I'll show you in detail, loops. And then you want to go on to the rest of the song. So it goes like that. This way I can still construct the song if we want to jam longer and it's not like every I'm not playing the verse different lengths or anything like that so that that basically goes straight through but then there's a section where I might break down for bass solo I might break down for an extended guitar solo uh, or I might want to keep jamming at the end most at the end for you know like get everybody up and dancing or at the beginning like to get everybody into the song these are sections usually they're but should be open till Q and with this method you can actually do that um, so I want to show you how to do that I'm, I'm uh, going to show you my, my how to build these logic sessions what you need to do uh, the other nice thing too is that this same session I can apply to a full band a trio or to just by myself attract that when I'm playing like for you right now and this I can do because I'm using individual stems. I'll show you. So if I play with a full band, all these tracks are muted. And the horns are muted. So all you're gonna hear is some rhythm guitars, some strings. Some synth parts, maybe secondary keyboard parts. That's it. If I play as a trio, I do this sometimes having Clydeen on keyboards and Oliver on percussion, then I need to bring bass and drums in. If I have a rhythm guitar player, well, then this part gets muted. If I play by myself for a jam track, careful, everything is open. So this gives me the flexibility. So there's a lot of little tricks and, and, and details to get into that I learned over the years. So um, we get into all of this and I'll show you how this is built up, okay? So here's what you need. 